Uh, hello. So what am I doing here? Um, I like to talk about um, creative cartography with code and advocate for code as a design tool and not just something for doing a lot of heavy lifting of processing and rendering and all that. Um, so I'd like to just take a little bit of um, time-honored cartographic mastery and apply it to some media where it's pretty easily overlooked because you're busy struggling with other things, specifically here, um, Canvas and SVG web graphics. Um, I think my abstract says something about CSS, but just kidding. Um, or in other words, this is kind of like uh, showing you where the drop shadow button is in JavaScript. There's no drop shadow button, but it's duplicating some little design effects that you do a lot in desktop software using these web graphics. So I have to confess you are probably, sorry, not going to learn anything from me right here, right now, um, because I'm just going to talk about some kind of higher level concepts of assembling web graphics together and introduce just a few little technical bits that you're going to run into on the way with these technologies. But I'm going to skip all the useful parts that actually show you how to do it. <laughs> because unless we want to skip the next break and have all the rest of the speakers cede their time to me, there's, there's no time to talk through code in any useful way. So instead, I've written it all up um, at this link, accessmaps.com slash 2019. If you are interested in this stuff, jot that down or take a picture. Um, there's a lot of extensive examples and code and step-by-step -step stuff. Um, this is a screenshot just to prove to you I did it. Um, I'm not <laughs> deliberately wasting your time. It's all in um, observable notebooks, so you can actually play with the code, see what happens, um, and so on. So do check it out if that's your thing. So instead, right now, the best thing I can say is to think about these graphic effects, um, a drop shadow or whatever, um, not just as the final whole appearance, but in terms of little small steps, think about how this thing would be assembled, because very often that's how you're going to have to do it with web graphics, um, SVG or Canvas. There's not often like an easy method or button, obviously, for this. So for example, the humble drop shadow, uh, we know what a shadow is, we see shadows a lot. Um, but graphically speaking, that stupid cursor, what is it made of? Well, you can think of it as a step-by-step -step here. You know you can't see the number one probably, but it's just a, um, so you've got your map of the US, this is just the basic shape of the US. Um, you're coloring it a certain color, probably gray. You're gonna blur that and then combine it back with the original graphic. And this really is often how you have to do it with SVG. There's not a widely supported like drop shadow filter. And I've used the IKEA uh, theme here because occasionally you'll want to scream and break things when you do this, just like making a bookcase. So before I go on to more examples like that, I'll just briefly address the technology I'm talking about. One is SVG. Um, Chris gave a really good overview of SVG earlier, but it's written in markup. It's a vector format. Web browsers can just display it normally, natively, so it's great. Um, it's pretty human readable if you look under the hood. Um, different tags for shapes and style attributes and things like that. Um, you can just crank these out of Illustrator, but if you're doing dynamic web mapping, you're really going to need to understand a little bit about how SVG is structured so that you can build these things on the fly. Now with Canvas, you can't really inspect it to see what's going on because it's an image element. It's just pixels, but there's a whole set of JavaScript um, what's an API, I guess they call it, methods and settings and stuff for drawing on this canvas and manipulating those pixels, um, which can be very powerful because you can just go bananas with customizing your image, messing with individual pixels. Um, so it's a little more opaque, but once you get the routines down, it, it'll become pretty easy and familiar. Um, and this code that you shouldn't bother reading is just some drawing commands for making a square. So then a few of those little bits uh, that I promised I just want to name a few things that are going to come up a lot in the types of examples that I'm going to show with SVG. Um, clipping paths, masks, patterns, the first thing on there. If you're like an Illustrator user, that's going to be pretty familiar. It's just some syntax you'll have to learn. Um, filter also is probably familiar to you. Um, that's things like a drop shadow. But you can get really powerful with that in SVG because the way filters work, they're, they're made up of these um, filter primitives. That's things like blur or a flood fill color. Um, and you can start combining those with each other and with masks and all kinds of stuff um, to build really complex filters and do really um, amazing, beautiful effects. So if you're doing very advanced design with SVG, 
you will probably work with filters a lot. And my bonus fourth item is Google, because if you ever want to do a thing, there's probably an example for you. Just search. Canvas has some general purpose things that are going to get used a lot in these graphics. Um, the first one, global composite operation, is a setting on the canvas that controls both blending mode, that's things like multiply and so on, and um, also various ways of doing opacity masks or clipping. Um, and a lot of the uh, graphics are going to come together by drawing something repeatedly and switching that setting around in between. Draw image here is, a, it'll just come up a lot for drawing one canvas onto another so that we can stay in control of layers, make sure that masks apply only to the right things and so on. Image data you'll work with if you really get into pixel manipulation, um, which doesn't mean just like changing a color, but maybe making calculations. Maybe a pixel needs to know what its neighbor's value is in order to do something. So you can kind of build up like customized filters, essentially. And of course, Google. And since that really wasn't helpful for learning anything, um, remember this link maybe kind of is. So just a periodic reminder that the real stuff is there. So back looking at um, graphics like assembly, uh, a lot of these things that I will show, whether it's SVG or Canvas, kind of come down to a general set of steps, sort of like this, where you're drawing something, maybe you apply a, a built-in filter, um, you might mask it by another thing, or like a different version of the same thing, and do that a lot, combine all these things together for the final, final product. Um, and once you've got the like syntax and algorithms for this stuff down, that's where the power of your amazing massive cartography brains come in. And so I hope that when I, when I step through some examples of this stuff, you can think about extrapolating that sort of thing to whatever designs you can imagine. So a few more examples. Um, in inner glow, like this inner glow or, or tint band effect is pretty common on maps. So how does that work in a web environment? Well, likely it's your shape. Sorry, I didn't localize my examples and I used my home instead, but uh, you've got your shape, put a big stroke on it, blur that stroke, and then clip it to the inside. That's how your glow is going to come together in Canvas or SVG. An offset path or offset stroke, whatever it's called. Um, water lines like this, a cool old-timey effect that is applied to a really bland map here, but that's okay. You can take a very wide stroke, erase a slightly narrower stroke from it for that outline, repeat that a few times with smaller um, strokes, plop that land back on top, and there's some water lines. Uh, how about a, a pattern that fades a little bit? Another coastal effect that is ill applied here. Um, hopefully you can see the, the hatching kind of fades out away from the land. So you can take a pattern, you know, that's a repeatable chunk of graphics. Tile it over this whole background mask it or clip it. I don't know. I use those words interchangeably incorrectly, I'm sure. Um, with a, a wide stroke on the land and then blur that stroke or that mask. There you go. And so on. So I'm just trying to run through this quickly. I'll close with a few examples of um, poorly explained images that um, take steps like that a little further for more fully formed aesthetics or transformations of style or what have you. And many of them just come from a simple like GeoJSON file. So you can do a lot with a little. Um, yeah, there's a big missing piece called D3 that I'm not explaining at all, but um, that's okay. So like this one, not too bad. I tried to punch up the contrast on this because I know these always look blown out. Um, this one tries to take that antique look a little further, uses the same kinds of glows and um, patterns and things that I showed before, but also a lot of more pixel level stuff to make some noise patterns, um, which is often used to erase bits of like the strokes between the states, um, bits of the pattern fill uh, along the coast to make it look a little more um, uneven and hand-drawn. Um, the background texture, of course, and that like, that's meant to be like creases from a folded paper. Here, uh, yeah, I think you can see like uh, it's a halftone look, um, color halftones. So here, this is using even more iterative pixel stuff by um, drawing a map like normal, then going through across these grids with the rotated screen angles and everything to extract color components, redraw as little circles. 
Here's an attempt at a John Nelson-esque paper cut thing um, using illuminated contours. It's got a little texture there as well to try to look like paper. Um, the illuminated contour look you can do in Canvas by using some tricks of drop shadows and um, masking. SVG actually has like lighting effects you can use to make kind of a pseudo 3D thing. Uh, here I've partially duplicated the classic stamen watercolor look um, following some processes that they described at the time, which use a lot of really clever techniques. Um, besides the kind of textures you can see here, there's some really interesting stuff um, using like thresholds and um, blurs and Perlin noise to do something that appears to actually alter the geometry shapes, the roads and states become a little more wiggly and generalized, um, but that's just in the rendering. We're not actually altering the data there. Here, this one also looks sort of like a watercolor. I just want to point out, um, this is SVG. So the, it uses a, a filter that makes those edges blurred a little bit, but also not just blurred, they kind of have a little splotchy look. Um, so there's some filters in SVG that can do that. And also the paper texture uses that, that lighting effect that I talked about, or didn't talk about, I mentioned it briefly. Um, and then I'll end with one of the least practical examples probably of practical cartography day, but a, a full on like shaded relief in canvas, um, drawn on the fly from raster DEM data. Um, it's really silly and slow to do in a web map, but it's cool that you can do it. <laughs> and again, since you didn't learn anything from that, just a reminder, it's all at that link. Um, <laughs> please do go there if you're interested in this stuff. Um, if you're not interested, come back promptly after the break for Molly's much more appealing talk. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs>